Hey, good morning and hey howdy. Man, this morning, I hate to talk about politics, but I'm going to. Don't go away. I'm talking about the politics of load shedding. And there's some politics involved there. Um, but first of all, click like, subscribe and follow. We've got some great conversations coming up. And man, we've been talking about generator-related topics. And today we're talking about, again, load shedding. This is the 50-amp Generac uh, smart management module. I just call it the load shed module. And we want to talk about this, but also load shedding with your generator just overall, because it, it's a thing. And so why is this a, a, a topic? So, latest code cycles, if you go to Article 702, which is optional standby systems, meaning what we're talking about today is uh, residential generators uh, not required, like would be required for a hospital or a public um, utilities facility, something that by law they have to have. This is something that Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner said, hey, we are tired of having our power go out, blah, 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 we want a generator. So here you go, Article 702. So here's the change, and this got stricter, and this is where uh, the politics comes in. So you have to have automatic, when we have automatic transfer switch or transfer equipment, we've got to either size that generator to handle the entire load, which when you do a residential load calc is going to be a big number, or have a load management system that will automatically manage the connected load. The standby source will have a capacity sufficient to supply the maximum load that will be connected by the management system. So we got all these load shed modules. We can either have a gigantic generator because we're trying to do 100% of all the air conditioning units the pool pump, um, all of it, or we can say we'll employ something like this, a load shed module, that will, as the load gets higher on the generator, will shut some of these loads off and allow us to keep the size of that generator a little bit more manageable. And so here's, here's where the politics comes in. Normally when I'm talking with my clients, they're going to say, hey, don't worry about when the power the power goes off, I, I'll just shut off, you know, I won't use my dryer and these ACs and uh, my electric double oven, which are all big loads for the generator. So here's the problem and here's the intent from the code writers and why this is stricter. So most of us never know when power is going to go off. We, we don't know if it's going to be on the weekend and evening, it just goes off. So here's the thing, let's say it's evening, you're finishing up dinner, there's a load of laundry going, electric dryer is running, maybe the oven's still running, baking something. You've got the pool pumps running because it's dark, and all of a sudden the power goes off. Well, at that point, when it goes off, if that connected load is higher than what the generator is sized for, it'll kick on, it'll try to service all that extra load, and then shut back off, or the generator breaker will kick off. Well, at that point, you no longer have an automatic, your power's not coming on. Now, here's the same scenario. Let's say you're gone and there's a bunch of extra loads running, okay? And you live in a climate where it gets super cold and your pipes might freeze if power goes off. So you're out, generator tries to kick on, goes back off, and now the house heat and stuff doesn't work. So that's the intent of not knowing it, it being automatic. They want to make sure the generator will come on like it's designed to. And so the load shed modules, whether they're Generax or, to be honest, any normally closed contactor. So let's rabbit trail. Some of you may not know. So let me show you the, the guts of this and show you one of these contactors. So, oh, hang on. So here's a contactor. So basically this is a magnetic set of contacts and if, let me grab a pen. Right now, this is a normally closed contactor. That means when we we have line and load, let's say this was an AC circuit, we've got phase one, phase two going in and out. This contactor, when these two points right here get energized, it will uh, open, it'll disconnect. Most of us are used to contactors that are normally open, and when the coil is energized, it will close. Okay, we use it to turn off. So this is the opposite, because we want in this situation for this load to continue to run. So this particular unit that's wireless, it senses frequency changes and voltage changes. And when that happens, then it will open whatever we're trying to shed. 
So this is a really great idea. The concept's really good. Whether you use something like this, this wireless, or just a normally closed contact, which you have to run a set a pair of wires to control the coil. So it's really, really handy. So the limitation with these in some of the older versions of this, this is the Model 7000, was that um, the load shed module did not always uh, shed on time. So then you have a generator being overloaded. The newer modules, I haven't seen feedback that says that. I like this, when I did Kohler, we had to run a pair of wires all the way from the transfer switch to wherever the ACs were or to another contactor. So this has been a game changer. Here's the politics. Even a, a lot of the feedback I'm seeing online in the forums, they're saying, hey, even if it doesn't work, most people are going to manage their own loads. Okay, But the inspector, when he sees this on your, uh, your, lo your load calc spreadsheet, and when they come out to inspect, say, oh, they've got some of these modules on, let's say, a couple of ACs or on an oven circuit. Well, okay, you've done your due diligence. So that's the politics, is really just saying, hey, they only bought a 24KW instead of a 50KW, but we've got three or four load shed modules installed around the panel or at an AC. We're going to be okay. And uh, there's a lot of feedback out there that said that's really the primary use for these, is just to keep the inspectors happy. So... I think that's a little cynical. We've installed a boatload of these. They work really well uh, for us, and uh, they've saved a lot. So, in a nutshell, most of us choose not to uh, install or sell or buy a huge generator. If you look at the price difference online for Generac, like from 18KW to 24KW, there's not a huge price spread between those, maybe a grand. I mean, for a one-time expense, not much. However, when you go to 32 kW or higher, it, it gets crazy. It's getting close to doubling. So the load shedding practically, if you're considering buying or installing, is can we uh, safely and practically power this property and keep it in that sweet spot, which is usually 24, 26 kW and below, or do we legitimately have to do a 32, 36, 40 kW? So the other thing for some of you who may not know this, once you go above, in most brands, uh, 32 and above, you're getting into a liquid-cooled generator. This is a monster generator. Now you're talking about something that's the size of an old Volkswagen versus... Uh, a 24kW that's basically 2 by 3 foot by 2 foot tall. It's basically an ice cooler, you know, an ice chest. So everything, once you go over that magic number of around 30, 32kW, everything gets bigger, more expensive, logistically harder to support. Okay, Not impossible, and we've done at least one 30K to 32 that we had to use the crane and all that to set it because it was a beast. Um, but the practical part of these load shed modules is that you can keep your size down, you can manage the loads, you can also prioritize the loads as far as when they, when they shut off. I'm interested to see what your feedback is. What have you guys found, for those of you who have used this or some version, I've used this and just a large normally closed contactor. Um, and then took a pair of wires off the uh, ATS and when the power went off, the ATS opened the coil, and the load was shed. So what have you guys done? Have you managed loads? Um, I'm curious. And then again, like I said, any feedback on this particular unit? What's your experience? So click like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Take care.